go now we're live all right i'm just kind of getting the camera set up here this is probably going to be a shorter live stream tonight just because i am really really tired and i've got a ton of other stuff to be doing it is 9 15 no, see i can't even carry on a reasonable conversation it is 9 15 p.m mountain standard time and i just literally walked in the house hello michael and william insanely busy i have uh man i don't even know what i've done today i went into town for a little while took care of some stuff i had to get a bunch of stuff packaged to get shipped and i just literally walked in the house maybe 20 minutes ago from starting the transmission job on our 500 dollars ranger i got both drive shafts out i got the transfer case out tomorrow i need to pull the transmission itself and uh start tearing it down to rebuild so it should be getting fixed here hopefully pretty quickly i need to get it apart and back together tomorrow hello lars Oh, that's enough. Cool, shopping for a tractor. That, uh, that's something I've been doing a little bit of lately, not too much. Uh, the Dodge, the Ram 2500, I actually just talked to the frame shop yesterday. It's down there. They said the frame damage is not as bad as initially thought. It's only going to take them like two hours to get the frame pulled straight. But the, the apron, they called it, that comes off the cab, the fenders mount to that, uh, they said they could not straighten and they want to replace it. So they're actually going to cut those spot welds, take it off, and weld a new one on. So we're looking at probably about two weeks to get that back. Uh, we're going to order, actually that's why tonight's live stream probably isn't going to be an hour. We're probably only going to do like, 30 minutes or something because we got to sit down and order some parts for that truck tonight uh things we know we're going to need are going to be a fan clutch airbags uh fenders hood just a lot of general body stuff like that we know we've got to get coming we're looking at potentially buying a parts vehicle the only problem with buying a parts vehicle is we end up with a whole truck so that's uh, a text message. I'll have to get back to that in a few minutes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Brian Cole, yes, the insurance, with the Ram 2500, the insurance company looked at it and they wanted to total it. They did total it. And Victoria, it's, it's called buying the truck back or keeping the truck, whatever, however you want to describe it. But basically, the insurance company paid off the truck and then Victoria had the option of taking, you know, X amount of money and the company took the truck or taking a lower amount of money and keeping the truck. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. I got stuff going on everywhere. Let me catch back up here for a second. Do, 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 do. But yeah, we're looking at hopefully hopefully just like two weeks before we have the ram back up here and that's another thing while it's at the body shop i was gonna go tomorrow but i don't know if i've got time now that i'm getting into this ranger but while it's at the body shop i'm gonna go down there and i'm gonna pull the airbags pull the seat belts pull the uh a lot of those like collision parts that can be repaired i mean or not collision but safety system parts that can be repaired uh, I'm going to be pulling them off and sending them out to get fixed. Uh, Michael McTavish, you're talking tractors here. Let me catch up. We looked and your Kubota deal was cheaper, 135 for us. Do, 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 do. 135 horse tractor with a loader, bucket, and forks for $50,000. If, if it's used, that makes a lot of sense. But if it's brand new, something seems, uh, that seems really, really cheap. Like cheap enough that something is wrong. 
because that I, I haven't seen any tractor in that size range brand new for double that price. I mean, the best I've found is my new Holland dealer here has a T5-120, a uh, brand new T5-120, which is about the same size as the TS-115, and he said he could put me in it for like $99,000. Uh, Mr. Dastrum S. Have you ever had any brews from Snake River Brewing out of Jackson? Um, I think I have. That sounds familiar. I know there's a brewery in Jackson that I've tried a beer from, and then there's uh, Black Tooth Brewing up in Sheridan. Uh, I've had their brown ale, Saddle Bronx, and I really like it. It's rare that I drink, but... You know, if, if I do, it's usually usually one of those. What happened to the F-250? Well, it ended up coming home on a trailer is what happened to the F-250. Uh, that truck is solid. It's a good truck. It is just, unfortunately, if I keep doing what I've been doing, I'm going to continue having problems. So I had to take a few steps to alleviate some problems. Oh. After the head job, I used it to move that Ram 2500 down to the <laughs> Ivy. Stop, please. After the... Crap, I forget where I was now. Sorry. Hey, stop. You're not helping. Uh, where was I? <laughs> Uh, yeah, the Ram. We carried that Ram 2500 down to the frame shop, and traveling from Cheyenne, Wyoming to Fort Collins, Colorado is essentially <laughs> Ivy. Stop. Take this. Go over there. Um, yeah. Give me a second here. Get back up. So we carried the Ram from Cheyenne down to Fort Collins, which is pretty much downhill the whole way going down uh, I-25. And the F-250 could not break 60 miles an hour without starting to get warm. Uh, it's, it's just the way it is. There's nothing wrong with the truck. It's just a small block F-250 that is 20 some odd years old at 8,000 feet elevation and it is working its butt off. That's Bobby Ledford. You said, can we see a diesel swap in the F-250? That's something I actually, I actually kicked around is if we bought a parts truck to rebuild the Ram, if we bought a parts truck to fix Victoria's rat truck, I could pull the engine and transmission and drivetrain out of that parts truck and drop it into the old F-250. I that I don't think anybody has swapped a modern 67 Cummins into an old body style Ford. But again, I don't really keep up on the truck forums like I used to, so somebody may have done it and I just haven't seen it. Um but I, I kicked that around not real seriously just because the 67s do have all that emission stuff and I have no idea what I'd be getting into that they're trying to do that. Really, when I've, I've looked at engine swaps, I've thought about engine swaps. The problem I have with doing any kind of engine swap is you'll never, ever, ever get that money back. If, I mean, it's a 20 some odd year old truck. The body is rough. I mean, it could be fixed, but again, it, it's one of those things where Vehicles are very difficult to make money on in a situation like that. And if I start doing some kind of custom engine swap, it's it's either one of those super custom trucks that sells for a lot of money, but you have to find that one specific buyer, or it's one of those trucks that nobody wants to mess with because it's had an engine swap. It's not factory. It's not stock. And if they wanted something that custom, they would just build it themselves. So as much fun as an engine swap might be, I'm not married to that truck. I'm not keeping it forever. I'm not keeping any of my equipment forever. So doing a project that big just doesn't pencil out right now. Um, 
It's not a bad deal if you can get it. Uh, seven three diesels. I am. I am very very familiar with the Ford seven three Power Stroke. I had a ninety four with a Power Stroke in it. I had an 01 with a Power Stroke in it. I had an O two with a Power Stroke in it. Uh, when I was going through diesel college, I worked on more of them than I care to try to remember. And as great as those trucks are, this, the 7.3 is going to go down alongside the 5.9 Cummins as just a benchmark of reliability. They may not be the most powerful thing in the world. They may not be the most efficient thing in the world, but they are rock-solid reliable. Unfortunately, the last 7.3 truck sold brand new in the U.S. was sold in 2003. So right now we're looking at, what's that? This is 2018. The newest one you're going to get is like a 15-year-old truck. And 15-year-old trucks are 15-year-old trucks. The engine might be great, but the rest of the chassis has wear. The rest of the drivetrain has wear. And frankly, technology has just improved quite a bit. Yes, Jason Lutz, 94 was the split year. Uh, for the 7.3 Power Stroke, you could get one in the last half of 1994, but only with the five-speed manual transmission. You could not get the Power Stroke with an automatic until model year 95 came out. Because the one we had, my family, my parents bought in 1996, and it was a 94. We bought it two years old, used, and then we kept it... Um, you know, it was a family vehicle for a while. When I was 17, I bought it from my father. I drove it for years and years after that. I ended up getting it to my sister, who still owns it. And last I knew, it had like 315,000 miles on it or something like that. But it, it was a rock-solid truck. All right, let me catch up. Banjo Benson, am I selling the Ranger? Yes, I will be selling the Ford Ranger. I am pulling the train. I've got the transfer case out of it now. I'm hoping to pull the transmission tomorrow, rebuild the transmission, get a new clutch in it, get a new flywheel on it. Get, if I'd love to get that buttoned up tomorrow, if I can get all that wrapped up tomorrow, I've got to replace a uh, gauge cluster. I've got parts coming for that. That's not working quite right. Something shorted in there and it blows the dash light fuse. And then uh, once that's done, it should be ready to sell. So if anybody needs a good used little truck, I can help you out. That Ranger is solid and I really hate to get rid of it. It just doesn't it doesn't fit my application. If I was going to have a spare vehicle, I would need a spare vehicle that could uh, you know, that could at the very least pull a gooseneck trailer or had a little more interior room than an extended cab ranger because that thing is pretty small. Uh, yeah, I don't see Ford bringing back the 7.3. They got rid of it for a reason, not because there was anything wrong with that engine, but it's... You know, as as modern emission standards get tighter and tighter, we're not going to be seeing old engines coming back. I wish we would, but it's just not realistic. Yes, Banjo, I do have to call several vehicles. I've got three uh, vehicles sitting here right now that are going to be leaving. I've got a, I've got the 96 Ranger that's going to be leaving as soon as I get the transmission done. Once that job is done, the next project vehicle coming in and going out is going to be my O. Four. I've actually got the key right in my hand here. The next vehicle out is going to be the 04 Explorer. It needs a new engine. So I'm going to be looking around. I got to go see. I don't know if there's an engine in the junkyard here that I would trust or if I'm going to buy a reman. But once the Ranger goes, the next project car is going to be the 04 Explorer. Um, John, I don't know what you're talking about, man. We're going to have a video Monday. We'll leave it at that. Uh, six, four, four, six, four. All right. One Jeep. 
But every vehicle that has ever had my name on the title has been a Ford truck, really. When I was 15 years old, my first truck was a 1964 F-350. Uh, from that, I went into a 1978 Ford F-100. From that, I had a 1994 F-250. What came after that one? After the 94, I bought a 2002 F-350 crew cab, lariat, beautiful truck, absolutely beautiful truck. And then I sold that and bought a 1956 Ford F-350, and that was my daily driver for like two years. I had a ton of fun with that truck, loved it to death, but it's one of those things, as I was getting into agriculture, working more with horses, a truck that old wasn't practical to be moving what I needed to move. It was a lot of fun. It just, you know, it's a 1956 F-350. It can't do that much. So I got rid of it after I bought the 2001 F-350, which if you go back and watch some of the old videos on my channel, you'll actually see that truck on my channel. It was a red two-door uh, F-350 dually. And I used it to haul the 1997 F-250 home. Uh, I bought the 97, it did not run. A gentleman had bought it thinking it was gonna be a good ranch truck for him, but it just needed a little more mechanical work that he was comfortable with, so he sold it to me. I winched it on a trailer, pulled it home, put a starter on it, and here we are. Um, how much of a job is it to replace a high-pressure oil pump on a 99 F350? I don't think they were that bad, but... I don't know, it's been a long time since I've had to do one. But I don't remember them being too terribly bad. Uh, what truck was I driving when I was working at the dealer back in the day? I've never worked for a car dealer. I've worked for a couple of different equipment dealerships, and I've worked for a tr few trucking companies. But once I went into the equipment dealerships, they set me up with a company truck. So I had, uh, I went through the first dealership I was at, we were running Ford 350s, 450s. What did, what they have? When I started there, we were running Ford 350s. And then about a year before I left there, I was there eight years, about a year before I left, they started buying uh, Ford F550s. And then, the next dealership I worked at, they were running Chevrolet 3500s. So that, that's what I was driving as far as a company truck. Uh, Nathan asking about the New Holland. The New Holland sells at absolute auction with no reserve this coming Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, May 16th, uh, the New Holland will sell at, uh, on auction time with no reserve for a hundred dollar starting bid so here's hoping it brings more than a hundred bucks but that's the way auctions go so we're literally just kind of gonna have to see what happens all right let me catch up uh some ford pickup diesel 250s had fuel pump issues yeah when they came out the 6.0 they brought out for emissions reasons. It was a great engine as the Navistar VT365, but Ford did their own programming and pushed it a little too far, in my opinion. And then the 6.4, they rushed into production. Again, this is just all my opinion, but I think they rushed the 6.4 out, which is why it had the shortest production lifespan of any Ford diesel. Uh, it came out in model year 08, and its last model year was 2010. Like, end of 2010, first of 2011, they brought out the 6.7, and as far as I know, they have uh, a 6.7 now. I think that's the current Ford offering. Uh, Josh Werner, yes, there is online bidding for the New Holland. I believe that's the only way to bid. You might be able to call in on the phone, but it is not going to be a physical auction where people stand there and hold up a bidder number. Uh, did I ever drive the Chevy shop truck? Lee, yes, I had one assigned to me. The dealerships I worked at, all of the field technicians had a truck assigned to them that they drove home every day. And we would leave our house, go straight to a customer, wherever that customer was, work on equipment, 
Uh, depending, you know, I would go three, four, five days at a time and not go to the office, not go to the shop. Just because I had my truck set up, I had parts on the truck, I had tools on the truck, the shop, you know, modern technology. Again, we they issued everybody iPhones. They would email us jobs and work orders and that kind of thing. Um, you know, the Chevy 3500s we had were fine. They were good company trucks. They were all 6.0 gas engines, automatic transmission, two-wheel drive, just real basic, basic work trucks, but they were good trucks. I don't know that I'd buy one for myself, but they were, I mean, they were fine. Uh, Link. I don't think I can put a link on a live stream, but if you want to see the, um, if you want to see the New Holland auction, head over to auction time. Look at the, uh, good night, John. I know it's getting late. It is 930 mountain time, so you're closing in on midnight over there. East Coast. Uh, any experience with a John Deere 4710? Personally, no, I do not. Uh, William T. OLF, okay. Um, will I go back to John Deere? I don't know. The local John Deere dealer, uh, Four Rivers there in Cheyenne, had a 6410 four-wheel drive with a loader on their consignment lot that I did stop in the office and ask about, but it sold to someone else uh, before they were able to get back to me. So I'm not ruling out a John Deere, but I'm not... Until I know what that New Holland is going to sell for, I don't know what I'm going to have to work with to replace it. So until I know what I've got financially to replace it with, it's hard to say... Uh, it's hard to say exactly what I'm looking at. It could be, I've looked at some of the bi-directional New Hollands, but I kind of put them off the list just because they're really, really expensive. Even used, they're, I mean, they're twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more than a comparable row crop or utility style tractor. They're really cool, but that is a ton of money. And I do not want to do that. Uh, Nick Fisher, what horse was the brief ride on? That is my paint horse named Hank. Uh, I've had him for several years now. He's kind of my, my go-to horse. He's my good horse, so to speak. Uh, Screaming Demon, what made me get out of wrenching? I really haven't. I mean, I have, but I haven't. I don't do it like I used to, but it is one of those things that I do to create an income. Like I've got three project vehicles right now that are that all need reasonably large repairs that I'm gonna repair and resell. Uh, I do equipment repair, repair for people. Sorry, I'm tripping over my tongue here. It's been a long day. You guys are talking about it getting late. I've been going since early this morning and it's 9.30 and I'm still gotta get done with this and go fix dinner. Massey Ferguson, okay. You guys send me one, I'll run it. You send it, I'll run the wheels off of it. Hey, speaking of, I had these stickers printed and it looks backward on my phone, so I hope you can read it. But if you want one of these, uh, send me a direct message or email guynwy at gmail.com and I'll set you up. They're three bucks a piece or two for five. Um, Cole Taylor, can I afford a Bobcat? It all depends on what the New Holland sells for. And the Ranch Life just asked the question as I was about to get to it, if I could afford one, would I get a skid steer? Uh, and that's a tough one. If I bought one right now, I would have to resell it. Uh, it would be extremely useful for putting in fence with the ability to push an auger straight into the ground. Uh, it would be great for that. It would be great for doing dirt work to put up a building. It would be ideal for a lot of things, but long term it doesn't work with me because i can't run a hay baler with a skid steer i can't run a bale processor with a skid steer i can't run a pto snowblower with a skid steer and frankly i can't drive a skid steer the road distances we have to travel like i can with a tractor i mean it's one thing to drive a tractor eight or nine miles it's something else entirely to try to drive a skid steer eight or nine miles so for now, the tractor is a better fit, but I can definitely see the wind blow. Uh, I, 
could definitely see a skid steer somewhere down the road. Lee, I I will take your word for it. I, that link does not work for me, but if that is the link, cool. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, 6175R would be great, but I am on, I get the feeling any kind of R series John Deere is going to be way out of my price range. If I were tractor shopping, um, which I will be, I think the top of my budget is going to be, uh, between 50 and 60 at the most. I'd like to stay way under that, but I mean, you got to spend money to make money. And that's one thing I've been looking at a lot the last, uh, about the last week, I have been spending, frankly, as much time in front of a yellow legal pad with a calculator as I have doing anything else because I've had a lot of different things come up here lately. I got a lot of irons in the far, irons in the fire, and, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to have to see how that plays out. Banjo Benson, with your skills, you could buy a fixer-upper tractor and come out well. I tried that already, man. <laughs> it sells at auction on Wednesday, and I'm going to lose my butt. <laughs> I have to laugh about it, because otherwise I'm just going to cry. I really do like New Holland tractors. Running... Running the TS-115 and then running a comparable year John Deere, as much as I hate to say it, the New Holland is a whole lot nicer to run. The cab is bigger, the cab is quieter, the cab, I prefer the layout, but yeah, we're just going to have to see what the New Holland sells for. Like I said, I'm into that New Holland for, I, I haven't gone back and done the math, I'm probably not going to go back and do the math just because I'm my estimate is close enough. I'm into that New Holland for like 35, 36,000 bucks. I'm hoping and praying it brings at least 20 at auction, but again, it's an auction. There's no reserve. There's a hundred dollars starting bid. So we're just going to have to see what happens. Daniel, have I considered leasing a tractor? No, not yet. I haven't. As I get a little further into this, that might be an option on the table. We're just going to have to see exactly how all the numbers pick out, pan out. Uh, Ron's equipment in Fort Collins. I have, I need to go check them out. Every time I say anything about a tractor, you recommend them. So I need to probably look into that. Yeah, the Ford TW10, the, that's the thing. And Jordan makes an excellent point. I don't want to buy a lot of of older equipment i don't there's just a certain set of features like the electric reverser and a few other things that i really need to have to do what i need to do in an efficient manner i could certainly do everything with an older model tractor but the efficiency improvements you get by going just a little bit newer makes a huge difference uh what am i going to do with the 8m once i get it running well First, I got to get it running and I'll figure out the rest of it after that. I don't have a dedicated job for that tractor. Uh, the 8 ends, for those of you that don't know, the 8 n you know, they were made from like 48 through 52, I think it was. Uh, they don't have remote hydraulics. They don't have live hydraulics. When you hit the clutch, both the hydraulics and the PTO stop working. You have to shift to neutral and then release the clutch again for those to to work so it's really not a practical tractor for a modern day farm but if i do anything with it i think it might be ideal to throw like a five or six foot box blade on and use for cleaning out the horse shed uh william t make the 8m nice and shiny and put it in the garage that's essentially what's going to happen i don't know that i'm going to paint it but i might i'm not going to pay somebody else to paint it just because that's a ton of money but i might get set up and paint it myself. We'll just have to see how that goes when we get into it. But yeah, it's going to be parked most of the time. It's a tractor that I'm, it's a tractor that I'm fixing up. I'm going to spend more money on it than what it's worth. And that's just fine because it has a lot of family history and sentimental value. And it's just a fun toy. 
That's also why it hasn't gotten touched yet, because fun toys that don't have a purpose have to wait until things with a reason and a purpose get done. So, where was I? Yes, yes, it is very much an antique. The one I have in particular is a 1948 model. Uh, I looked at the New Holland by Directionals, and I would love to have them. I just think they're going to be out of my budget. Uh, William, the, the N-series market, whether it's the 8N, 2N, or 9N, the N-series market is kind of regional. In Tennessee, I could buy a running, driving Ford N-series for under $1,000 without much trouble. I mean, I've seen them sell at auction, drive into the auction, drive out of the auction, and sell for like five, 600 bucks. Uh, out here in Wyoming, the ones I do see for sale have asking prices of three to $4,000. I don't know if they're actually selling for that, but at least that's what the market seems to be asking. So I would think real sales price is probably not far off. See, coal, Lee, those prices are kind of, Lee, 3200 bucks. that's about right for Colorado. And uh, yeah, John Ritter, brand preferences over another. I'm not brand loyal, but I'm very dealer loyal. And my New Holland dealer has gone above and beyond every time they have had the chance to to help me and take care of me including guys bringing parts driving parts literally an hour at like six seven o'clock on a friday night so they could get them to me so whatever tractor i buy i want it to be a tractor that if i can't buy through them i've got them looking for a tractor for me right now i kind of told them what i was looking for what my budget was and when i expect to be buying probably um the new holland is going to sell may 16th it's going to take a couple of weeks for all the financing and everything from that auction sale to process so what i told my new holland dealer is i'm looking at probably sometime in june being ready to pull the trigger on a new tractor that way it can be delivered i can get it set up with my implements and then middle toward the end of july we'll be going into the hay field with it so i'm looking for something that if i can't buy from my dealer i can at least get support for from my dealer so my top my top contender honestly would be another new holland i like the cab layout i love my dealer so if I can find one in the right price range, that's the way I'm probably gonna go. If I don't end up with another New Holland, uh, my New Holland dealer is also a Massey dealer. And my John dealer, my John dealer, my John Deere dealer is here in Cheyenne and they're okay too. They haven't impressed me as much as a New Holland dealer has, but that's not their fault. I haven't had as many problems with the John Deere to need that kind of service. The 6410 is fine. So I guess that says something about John Deere too, but I think the big takeaway there is don't buy a piece of crap off the internet from a thousand miles away that you can't look at. Blake, you sound tired. <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact, I do. I have, uh, since I got out of bed this morning, I have been working on pretty much something all day long. Um, I went into town and had to do a bunch of stuff. I came home, I worked on the Ranger for a while on a couple of other things for a while and i literally I, I walked in the house at like 8 45 9 o'clock and started this live stream a few minutes after that and when i finished this live stream i gotta go cook dinner and then order some dodge parts for the 2500 and then uh i, I got a bunch of stuff so yes i am very tired but it's okay because we're making progress there is a Kubota dealer in Cheyenne. As far as Kubotas go, I'm just not impressed with them. They're great tractors. Uh, if you have one, if you like it, that's awesome, but they're just not for me. Uh, William T. Musil, do the trans and the Ranger. That's what I'm working on. Uh, I got the Ranger in the garage. I got both the drive shafts out of it. I got the transfer case out of it. The transmission is ready to come out, uh, and that's what I'm planning to start on in the morning. Uh, Jacob, the dogs are great. Ivy is actually laying right here in the floor, chewing on a bone, and Rika is laying right behind her, um, just kind of collecting everything she can get her little paws on. Uh, do, 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 do. Kubota, Kubota, Kubota. 
Mahindra, Kubota, Massey. I do not need a sugar rush. And I don't need any more coffee. I, I drink way too much coffee. I really do. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's another story too. T4. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. I'm, you guys are right. I'm exhausted. Send me a message. Send me an email. Buy a sticker. You know you want to. Uh, but I think I'm going to call this one a wrap tonight. If you, if you are a Patreon subscriber or if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there is a very, very, very big video going up on Patreon tonight. Like in the next 10 or 15 minutes, there is a big Patreon video coming out. The same video will be available on YouTube. It is going to be Monday morning's video, but if you want to see it early, uh, 